Microsoft, please fix Windows. <laughs> I'm literally begging you, please fix Windows. How can you have an Xbox handout that runs Windows and then someone could just install Linux on it and have a better time? That is a poor showing, to say the least. Now, you've done great work to have the game mode and have controller support and make the UX better. But the next hurdle that you need to do is you really need to start handling the hardware that you're running better. We're going to be taking a look at battery life between both of these and show that it actually is possible on Windows, running the Windows version of this, to actually do better than Linux does. But I still have to step in and do work to make that the case. We're also going to just briefly touch base on what is happening with power and how that's all done on TDP. So when we lock power together, like when we're looking at that on the Linux side of things, I'm actually pulling it uh, 10 times a second. And from there, we can actually start looking at power and how it's distributed. And, and I've talked about this at length years ago as well, like the TDP on Steam Deck is wrong. Um, and taking a look at TDP on Steam Deck OLED, uh, comparing at low TDP compared to the LCD version and why we're seeing those discrepancies. So there's interesting information. We'll touch briefly on what the implications of those are and get a better understanding of what that means. And then we'll take a, a, a brief look at benchmarks just to see how much better Linux is over Windows still. And I guess hope real hard that Microsoft gets the message that they really have to do a much better job with running the hardware that the operating system is using. Up first, the good news is that the latest version of Bazite, Bazite 43, has full support for the Xbox Ally. So it has support for doing everything in TDP. Setting up fan curves if you want to have a better fan curve just to make it more quieter in certain situations or doing LEDs on the analog sticks. Pretty much everything that is there has full support. So that's awesome to see. Thank you very much to the Bazite devs for always pushing forward and just being rapid with the support that you guys have on Bazite. And it's one of the reasons why I generally recommend Bazite overall instead of SteamOS general. And one of the things interesting that we're going to see is that SteamOS 3.8 does have very specific enhancements for the Steam Deck itself. And it does win in some certain situations, which is very interesting to see, seeing the work that Valve is doing than general Bazite support. But because TDP and all the other ancillary functions of a handheld will have better support for other handhelds, typically I always recommend Bazite. So anyway, just want to say thank you very much to the Bazite does for always showing such eager support and fast support for Bazite on newer handhelds. It's great to see. What we're looking at here is Celeste running on the Xbox Ally, obviously running Bazai 43. If we take a look at the battery pull, what is being pulled from the battery, we can see that it's a bit over 7 watt total. Now, what's interesting here is that when we take a look at TDP, I have it set to 15 watt, but it is automatically arranging power, so it's using as little as possible. And what we're seeing here is that we're getting fantastic results automatically on Bazai 43 without a user having to go in and do anything. Now, I want to make it clear here that Windows by default will not do this as well. However, we can arrange it such that by twiddling with CPU clocks and messing around with the system that we can actually achieve the same frame rate, still have 60 FPS, but actually use less power than Bazite 43 is using. A little bit less, not too much more. It's about a 5% difference, but we're still doing a bit better on Windows when we manually tweak things ourselves. So that just goes to show you that even though Linux is doing a fantastic job automatically, that Linux could still do a little bit better. But more to the point is that Windows can do just as good as Linux with everything running and we just need to handle the, the system better. So this is a recurring thing that I, a recurring theme that I am often talking about is that this is the case. Before we get into the benchmarks, I do want to mention that taking a look at power and making sure that the power levels that you have on these systems is correct uh, before you start comparing them. Now, Bazite, one of the things I don't like about Bazite is that it will often use the TDP boost function. And on Windows, even for Asus, if you just do performance mode, PL1 and PL2 will be offset. So if, if it's 17 watt for PL1, it's going to be like 20 watt or 22 watt on PL2. So that means for a period of time that it's actually using more power than what you think it is. So comparing these and just saying 17 watt to 17 watt isn't actually accurate. And depending on when you check it, it may be wildly different. So you need to make sure that when you're taking a look at power, you're doing PL1 to PL2 and locking them together. Make sure on Bazite boost is off and on Windows, make sure that you are manually configuring the power to be PL1, PL2 to be hard set to each other. Uh, you should be using other tools outside of what Asus provides or anything else so that you can get a more one-to-one -one relationship of actually making sure that the power you're setting there. Now on Linux side of things, I am taking a look at power 10 times a second. One of the interesting things is that 
uh, Ryzen AMD Z2A, which is Van Gogh, but it is decidedly very similar to Aerith and not Sephiroth. And I have done a video uh, over a year ago when Steam Deck OLED came out that if we took a look at that, the low TDP of Steam Deck OLED was worse than the Steam Deck LCD. And the reason for that is how power is distributed at certain TDPs. So even if you set it hard to 10 watt, 10 watt, PL1, PL2, it actually uses more power. And I also talked about this in an older video called um, the TDP on the Steam Deck is wrong. And in gaming loads, it will use significantly more than what you set it at. In fact, if we take a look at the, like a power histogram of how that's done, if I'm looking at it, if I'm looking at power 10 times a second, if we take a look at the frequency of how many times the max watts used on the package, not total system power, just the package, we can see that at 20 watt, the the amount of power that is being used on package more often than not is 21, 22, and 23 watt. Like that particular section is used most often. And you can see that in some instances, it will go all the way up to 32 watts. So there are some times where it goes up there. Now it also goes down the other way. So you can see 16 watt and otherwise is also highlighting on there. That means that during times of when this chip is actually allocating power, depending on whatever slice of time it is, it is kind of oscillating between all of those to try to make 20 watt in this particular instance happen. The end result being is that AMD APUs kind of play fast and loose with this and not every APU is the same. But more to the point is that the AMD Z2A is very similar to the power profile of Aerith and not Sephiroth as Sephiroth will actually uh, cut off. It'll constrict power uh, at the high end. It'll kind of just gated off. So that's something that I just want to quickly address here for Z2A versus Van Gogh so that you have a better idea of what, what we're looking at. Anyway, that's pretty much the power characteristics and, and a brief talk about like how we can actually make Windows, at least battery life-wise, achieve the same as what Bazai 43 or Linux can do. But now let's just see how it does automatically when we just set power to the same. So let's take a look at the benchmarks. All right, so as I said earlier, we're going to be only looking at three games here. Cyberpunk, which does challenge multi-core CPU quite a bit. We're going to be looking at Doom the Dark Ages, which has ray tracing enabled all the time. And then Returnal, which is a UE4 game, but it is very demanding on the GPU. And that's all we're going to be looking at and seeing how well the Xbox Ally does with Bazai 43, which is the latest version that has full support for the Xbox Ally. And then comparing it with the Steam Deck OLED, because that is Van Gogh or Sephiroth and is basically the same chip as the Z2A. And it's a better comparison between all of these platforms, especially with the OS. Taking a look at this, you can see that generally speaking, it's pretty much the same. When we take a look at 15 watt to 15 watt, it's effectively 3% better. Not that much, uh, but it's 3% across the board, a 1 percentile, 0.2 percentile. If we take a look at 20 watt, we're about 10% better. So we're pushing considerably more power into it, about 30% more power, but only getting 10% better performance. This is the diminishing returns that you will all often hear me talking about, but to qualify what that means is after 15 watt, even though the Z2A goes up to 20 watt and you will see those performance gains, we are putting far more power into the platform and the returns that we're getting are more less and less as we start pushing more and more into it. So there isn't really a tremendous benefit for doing so. We'll take a look at what that looks like across these three games. But generally speaking, every different platform has that diminishing returns point of where you don't want to be pushing more power into it. Technically for the Steam Deck OLED, diminishing return starts at around 11 watt uh, and you'll start to flatten out your performance curve there as you start pushing more and more power into it. At 15 watt, generally speaking, that is where you're going to get 90% of all the performance you're going to get out of that platform. That being said, that's what that looks like. Now, what happens when we take a look at Windows running it and the Xbox Ally, right? The Xbox version of Windows in game mode and all that other stuff and see what that, that looks like. And here is the results with the Xbox Ally running Windows game mode and, and Windows in general. At 15 watt, the Steam Deck OLED, again, uh, we touched on this briefly before, is that the Z2A that is in the Xbox Ally has power characteristics that are more in line with the original Aerith version of Van Gogh rather than the Sephiroth version of Van Gogh. And Sephiroth has a power cap uh, with how much it will overuse power. It will go over that power limit. Whereas Aerith did not. And Z2A and Aerith kind of look very similar insofar as how much they will push power over. So if we take a look at the Xbox Ally uh, versus Sephiroth, Steam Deck OLED is 19% better at 15 watt to 15 watt. And if we take a look at 15 watt to the Z2A, it's 23% better. Now, if we go to 20 watt on the Xbox Ally, the Steam Deck OLED at 15 watt Sephiroth is still 
8% better. Now that has a power disadvantage, the Sephiroth build versus the Xbox Ally. And then if we take a look at the 20 watt version of Z2A, around 21% better. So generally speaking, around the same area of being better in performance overall. So not a great showing. Let's take a look at 1080p results. And here are the 1080p results. Before we take a look at the Xbox Ally, What's interesting is that the Steam Deck OLED at 15 watt and the Xbox Ally at 15 watt are basically neck and neck. The Steam Deck OLED is a little bit better here. It's like 1% better. This is like margin of error territory. But again, if we take a look at the 20 watt result of Bazai 43 on the Xbox Ally, it's 5% better. Um, so as you can see, as we push to higher resolutions, we're even getting even less benefits for pushing more power. We're only getting that benefit where we're not having that GPU headroom of making it a GPU bound problem, we can actually make it more of a CPU problem. But when we start doing that, you can see just how little performance is gained on the GPU end, even when we're inside of the space. So just pushing more power with that same type of uh, memory scope, it, there's not really much gains to be had by just pushing more power into a platform. If you take a look at the Xbox Ally results, uh, we're 15% better, 15 watt to 15 watt, um, generally speaking. Uh, and if we look at 20 watt, again, it's 15% better. So 16% uh, better. So that's pretty much where we are. The next thing we'll be looking at is Doom the Dark Ages. This is low settings, 720p native. Now, Doom the Dark Ages always has ray tracing running. And this is what it looks like. Steam Deck OLED is actually on top here. But effectively, I mean, they're kind of similar. The only thing that's really different here is our 1% on 0.2% dial. But Steam Deck OLED is still winning here. So there are some things that Valve is seemingly doing that is really taking better advantage of the hardware from their own platform specifically. So great showing from Steam Deck OLED, but effectively they're all generally the same. And I, doing 720p native is not going to be a very playable experience. You're going to have to do upscaling to 720p. So you're going to have to be rendering at like 360p and then upscaling the 720p just to have a far more playable experience where you're going to be getting 45 FPS, where if you do uh, XES as balanced, the game doesn't look terrible and it's far more playable overall. But uh, unfortunately, that's not very exciting and kind of shows the age for the Steam Deck. Now, if we just go ahead and put in the Xbox Ally running Windows, here are the results showing that. So the Xbox Ally is effectively 15% worse on averages. And when we go to 20 watt versus 20 watt, it's also 13% worse. So it just, again, it, you would still need to run handheld mode settings that are, are now there. So low settings is actually a bit above handheld settings. So this is actually a little bit harder for the game to run in these particular settings. But when I started running these tests before, uh, the handheld mode settings weren't available just yet. Handheld settings are excellent if you were trying to get uh, that extra performance boost, and I really do recommend doing it when in handheld, but you're still gonna need upscaling of some sort. Uh, but again, we're gonna see this is, you know, Vulcan to Vulcan, there's nothing here, there is no DXVK. So what we're seeing here is that once again, uh, Steam Deck and Linux are just beating it. It's We're about 15% better overall. So that's the 720p results. Let's go ahead and take a look at our 1080p results. And here we can see the 1080p results. None of these are playable, but I would say that the Steam Deck results are uh, impressive. Like there are, there is extra work done from Valve here where they're really getting down to the, to the nitty gritty of what's available on this platform. And if we take a look at the Windows side of things, it's pretty abysmal. Uh, and just once again shows that that where Valve is on the same type of hardware that it's 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 in another league. Like it's it's really taking advantage of the hardware in a def in a different level that Windows is 100% capable of doing. It's it, outside of bloat. It just needs to handle the hardware better. And uh, hopefully, hopefully they get to it. Last game we'll be looking at is Returnal. This is low setting, 720p native, no upscaling. And what we can see here is that effectively at 15 watt and 15 watt, I mean, they're basically the same margin of error. Z2A, the Xbox Ally with Bazai 43 is slightly better, but it effectively is no difference. When we go up to 20 watts, we're pushing significantly more power into it. Uh, we're getting 8% gains. Uh, that's not really all that much worth. That's not really worth it, right? So that when we take a look at these settings, in this particular area, we do need upscaling, right? Again, this is going to be a recurring thing as more and more newer games come out. The Steam Deck is showing its age. It really needs an update. And we're likely not going to see one uh, Steam Deck 2 until uh, 2027 at the best, uh, at best case scenario. So this is what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like when we get the Xbox Ally involved. So obviously, when I say Xbox Ally, I mean the Windows version. And you can see that the new entries here are Returnal Win64 shipping because that's what's being captured when it's being done. 
at 15 watt, it's not that big of a difference as it once was before. Steam Deck OLED uh, is about 7% better, and the Xbox Ally with Dazai 43 is about 10% better. Not the 15% better, but still, better is better, and gains are gains. Uh, and if we go to 20 watt versus 20 watt, it's 8% difference. Uh, so this is 720p. Let's see what happens when we do 1080p. And here are the results for 1080p. The one thing I want to make note of is take a look at the top. This is using Epic settings. So whenever I do 1080p settings, I'm switching the preset to Epic, not low, uh, just to kind of get a, you know, a bigger slice of how things change, especially as we start looking at newer APUs that come out. Uh, obviously, 13 FPS on average is awful and not playable at all. Uh, so you can't play on these platforms, Steam Deck OLED, whatever. Uh, they just don't have enough grunt to get us there. Uh, but it'll be interesting to compare, like when the Steam Deck 2 comes out, when we take a look at these, we can see how much further along we've come. But when we compare these platforms, we look at Windows at 15 watt versus like Bazite uh, 43 at 15 watt. It's around 7% better. Not a world of difference, but still, we're seeing a uh, we're seeing it handle the, the the APU, the hardware itself, better. And if we take a look against the Steam Deck OLED, it's only 6% better. So not as large of a difference there, but still we're doing something better. And that 20 watt, we're only going to compare it to Bezite 43 at 21, that's 10% better there. So 20 watt to 20 watt is 10% better. 15 watt to 15 watt is only 7% better. Uh, obviously, none of these are very playable, but it just goes to show that regardless of pretty much whatever I'm looking at, Linux Bezite 43 is just handling the platform better. But it's worth noting that Steam Deck uh, on SteamOS 3.8 does have some additional tweaks in there that is handling Van Gogh, Sephiroth in a manner that is still a bit better than what Bazai 43 is doing generally. But Bazai 43, uh, just Linux general, GameScope, Proton, it's doing a fine job. So uh, really interesting results to take a look at. Looking at Van Gogh, which is a challenged platform uh, that's old at this point, right? It's like 2022 uh, and we're in 2025. So that's what that looks like. Uh, let's just wrap up this video and kind of catalog my thoughts. So ultimately what this is coming down to is I'm once again begging Microsoft to fix Windows. Make sure that you are handling the hardware as best as you can, because right now, Valve is is eating your lunch, guys. They, they have a small team over there compared to you guys. Like Microsoft is this giant mega corporation versus Valve, and these guys are showing you up. I still like using Windows, and I personally don't mind. Like eventually, if Valve just keeps on coming out and keep on, and they continue to do better, and then new hardware comes along, Steam Deck Two sells well, all future Valve hardware sells well. As Linux starts to gain market share. If that hits 10%, when we start seeing gaming companies starting to have to pay attention to Linux and doing things for it, and, you know, anti-cheat starts coming over uh, more often, and the newer version of VAC, maybe they'll just use the, the newer version of VAC, which uses ML to see for if people are cheating. Then, you know, if they just start using that... I, I mean, what do I care, right? Eventually, I'll just go over to Linux. But I like using Windows. So, for your own sake, please... Please fix Windows. I'm I'm begging you. Thank you very much to my YouTube channel members as well as my Patreon members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.